All right, hello and welcome everyone once again to the latest edition of the New Line Interactive Weekly Wisdom Webinar. Once again, my name is Tim Garber and I am the training specialist here at New Line. And the topic for this week is a another look at the X series. Um, and as you may recall, for those of us who, who joined us a few weeks ago, I, I did a uh, an X series webinar, um, which was a which was a good overview, as well as kind of a preview of some of the newer stuff. And, and I used the X nine specifically as an example of that. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to do today is we are going to take a closer look at the X six the X8 and the X9, and focus more on the additions and changes to those products compared to the previous X-Series products. So that's what we're going to focus on today. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So there it is, the X6, the X8, and the X9. We've got a picture of the X9 right there. And here are some of the basic speeds and feeds. The X6 is going to be uh, a 65-inch flavor. The X8 will be a 75, and the X9 will be, or is, I should say, in 86. Um, and it's all 4K all the time. So, um, so those are going to be the Ultra HD uh, flavors in the X6 now going forward, uh, which is a wonderful thing. Again, giving folks maximum resolution. Here is what we are going to look at specifically. We're going to look at the new in-glass technology that we are using, which is wonderful stuff. Uh, we're going to take a look at the file commander that we are now including um, on these displays. We're going to take a look at the on-screen keyboard, which I know sounds like a very mundane thing, um, but you're going to like it. Uh, it. It was something that I really kind of latched onto when I first saw it. And then we're, last but not least, we're going to take a look at just some of the changes to the home screen, uh, which I actually talked about a little bit on the last webinar um, the last era, I should say, the, the first X series webinar we did. Um, but that's a look at our lineup. So let's jump right in. In glass technology. The idea behind in glass is that it is a touch technology that, not to get too deep in the, in the, in the technical weeds, but what it does is it emits light through a, or through a transparent medium, in this case glass, and when the light comes out the other end to the sensor area, any time that a finger or a stylus it touches the surface, that actually disturbs that plane of light, and there's an algorithm that then crunches the numbers to detect where the touch point is. Obviously, it does that exponentially quicker than the time it took for me to explain that. Um, and what it really gives us is it gives us a super, super accurate um, touch surface that we can use, not just for navigating around the system, but also for writing. And, and that's a wonderful thing, because anytime we have an opportunity to maximize the, uh, the experience and make that as good as we can for users uh, so that they can use these for collaboration and interactive tools. That's exactly what we want to do. And one of the great things about the in-glass technology is not only does it give us this, this super accurate surface, but the technology also, and I didn't have any screenshots, so I dug out the old, the, the good old trusty camera phone and I fired away uh, using, and it, it begs the question, right? What did we do before smartphones? Um, but you see the picture that I took here. One of the things that this technology allows you to do is it because it has uh, such a good algorithm, it's capable of detecting the actual thickness between a something, a, a tool, say like a finger and something that is particularly thin, such as a thin stylus. And it's able to detect between the two and allow you to draw a different thickness of line and a different color when you're using each tool. And you can use them both at the same time. So I can have my finger and have the thick red, and at the same time, or simultaneously, I can have a stylus in the other hand, and I can draw thin yellow lines uh, at the same time. So the technology does allow for that differentiation, and you can do those things at the same time using either a thick tool or a thinner tool. So that's, that's another great thing that it does. But along with that, 
the screen is also, I should say the glass is actually optically bonded to the panel. And what that means is that you don't have that pocket of air between the glass and the panel itself. There, it's actually, it's, it's, it's bonded directly to the panel. And because you don't have that air gap there, that helps with the accuracy, with the light refraction, um, that also affects the accuracy, and you don't have potential issues with condensation because you don't have that pocket of air there. So that's, that's another great thing about it. And again, the screen itself is a wonderful, surface to write on. Uh, anybody who's had an opportunity to do it, they're, they're really, from a feeling standpoint, there really is very little drag. And so you really do feel as if you are writing on a surface that was built to take it. Uh, and, and that's what we want. We want to have our users have the best experience possible when they're meeting, collaborating, brainstorming. And we don't want them thinking about the technology, how things don't feel right, because uh, that just gets in the way. Uh, the best technology is the technology that you don't even think about because it just works. And this is one good example of that. Next on the hit parade, we've got the file commander. So we've always had a basic file manager uh, that we've included as part of the front end uh, for these displays as part of the Android OS that we have on the displays themselves. And, and that's been perfectly fine. Um, it, it works fine. It allows you to, to access files and move things around and, and what have you. Um, but the file commander really takes this to a whole different universe. And let me point out before I get into it that the, the overarching theme, as it is with anything that has to do with a new line product is, if it's going to be on a new line product at all, it needs to be convenient, it needs to be easy to use, it needs to be intuitive. If it's not, it doesn't matter how powerful it is, we're not going to use it. And the file commander is a very, very good example of something that checks all those boxes that gives our users an avenue by which they can access information and they can do it easily, quickly, efficiently, intuitively. A couple of touches, and you get from point A to point B. And the file commander, as you can see just from the picture there, it looks like a file management system that you would find on, say, a Windows PC or an Android device. Because you have the left-hand column. Now let me bring up my income tool here. So you have the left-hand column over here. That's where all of the, um, the storage places are located. It's also where you can add a cloud storage solution that the file commander can access. And the example that we have here, as you can see, we have, and Daniel's one of our tech support aces, and he's got a Dropbox account that he just uses for testing purposes. So he installed on this X9 that we see here, he installed his Dropbox uh, test account. And so it shows up on the home screen, and it also shows up over here in the file commander uh, storage spaces area. So anytime you install an account, or, or I should say give the file commander access to one of your cloud storage accounts, and it could be Dropbox, Box, OneDrive. Google Drive isn't there yet, though I think we're working on it. Um, and I think Amazon is also on here as well. So you can access your cloud storage on the file commander, giving you access to all of your information on your account. So that's, that is primarily the idea behind the file commander is to give you easy access to network storage or cloud storage. It will also handle local storage. If you have a thumb drive plugged into one of the public USB ports, it will handle that as well. Okay, So that's one of the great um, ideas or one of the great features of the file commander is to give you access to all that wonderful stuff easily and quickly. The other thing also that it does is you'll notice that there's a button and let me choose a different color here just for fun. Button right here, label PC file transfer. And what that does is that allows you to, when you press that button, it brings up the PC file transfer uh, window. Uh, and when you start the service, the file commander will generate an IP address based on the network it's on, an IP address and a port number. And then from any laptop or whatever, bring up a web browser, enter in that IP and port number, and you can transfer files using the internet to and from the file commander. I haven't used it, but it looks very, very slick. So that's another way that you can share information 
uh, to and from your X-Series display. Also, one last thing I'll point out here is this little plus. That allows you to add another category to the home screen. They're predefined. You don't get to make your own, but there are predefined categories, and you can either uh, – they're checkboxes. So you can either add them to the home screen or take them away if you don't want them. Uh, and so the file commander manages this information very intuitively. The file commander is also very smart. Let's say that you wanted to access pictures. When you go to the pictures area, the file commander will actually pull all of your accessible uh, local storage as well as your uh, cloud storage where pictures um, are, are known to be located and then you choose the one that you want and you get access to those individual picture folders. Again, it's very, very smart and it's very intuitive. So we're, we're very happy with it um, just even from that standpoint. But the last thing I'll show you about the file commander and the reason I wanted to point this out is because we get this request all the time. Can I choose a customized background for the display's home screen? Before, you were, you were only able to choose the, the default options that happen to be installed um, on the display itself. But now, congratulations, you get to choose your own and you can do that from the file commander. So the way that I did it, I went to the uh, pictures area, uh, it, it, because again, we have Daniel's um, test cloud account, his test Dropbox account. He's got some sample pictures in there. That was one of my choices. I opened that folder. This was the selection I got. I selected this new line picture. And then if I wanted to choose that as my background, I would then press that button right there, the one that looks like uh, a little picture of a mountain. That's the set background button, and that allows you then to choose a picture and use that as your display background. So that feature is now there. It's part of the file commander. Uh, so we know, I know we've gotten requests for that. Okay. Next on the hit parade is the on-screen keyboard. Now, I realize, again, it seems like a very, a very mundane thing, but here's, here's why I point this out. And it's also, again, one of the reasons that I kind of uh, caught on to this when I first saw it is, and again, this is my, this is not New Line Interactive's opinion. This is Tim Garber's opinion. My opinion has always been that when it comes to on-screen keyboards, that's often, shall we say, not a strength of a touch-based system. Uh, the on-screen keyboard is is oftentimes not the big strength of that because uh, oftentimes those keyboards aren't uh, very customizable. They don't always scale the way you want them to. Um, but in the case of this on-screen keyboard, it actually does those things. So here on the left-hand picture is the default uh, setting, which is the standard float keyboard. And there's a button right here in the lower right-hand corner of the keyboard. And when you press that button, the first thing it will give you is the large fixed keyboard that you see in the right-hand picture there. Press the button again, and it will give you the split fixed keyboard, which is there on the left, which has uh, the keyboard split and divided with the uh, numeric keypad in the center. Press it one more time, and you get the split float keyboard, which allows you to have two independently movable keyboard pieces that you can resize and move to your heart's content. So I'll, I'll just come around and say it. For my money, this is the best on-screen keyboard I've ever seen. Um, it's customizable in ways that I haven't seen with keyboards before. Uh, the buttons are sized nicely. It's easy to maneuver and type on them. Um, you pick a configuration that works for you and you go to town. So anytime you're on an, an X6, 8, or 9, and you are using something that requires type text, say like the file commander would be a real good example, um, this is the keyboard that you'll see. If you're using the OPS or if you're using another connected PC, you're not going to use this keyboard. This is only for the internal applications of the X series itself. Uh, if you're using something else, like if you're using a Windows PC, you're going to use the Windows keyboard for that. And Tim, we should mention uh, up front here that you know you're you're talking about X six, eight, and nine. Correct. Are, are you know new models? Correct. And not apply to the existing five and seven series. Yes, thank you for the reiteration because you were absolutely correct. Uh, again, the idea behind this webinar, because I gave you I gave you a taste 
uh, using the X9 as an example in the previous webinar that I did on X series. Now I'm giving you the whole mouthful. The X5 and the X7 are still current product. Again, they're still out there, um, but the X6, 8, and 9, are, this is the next generation stuff. And, and those are the models that are including all of these changes and new features and tools that I'm talking about. So yes, thank you, Wes, uh, for once again reiterating that. I wanna make sure everybody's aware of that, so thank you. Um, and here, again, and I talked about this last time. So for those of you who joined me on the, uh, the first X series webinar I did, I talked about the new home screen. So for those of you who are very familiar with the X5 and the X7, that home screen, of course, is, is a, a little bit different. This is the new one. One of the things I want to point out right away is because we consider the X series to be what we refer to as UCS, our unified collaboration system, when you are looking at the, the screen, just even getting ready to do something, the overarching theme of that is collaboration, meeting, sharing. And we want the look of the screen to really um, to really be a part of that theme, to actually speak to that. But we'll even take it as far as, as with the naming scheme for the buttons, having that be part of the theme also, and having it be very comprehensive. So when you wanna access the OPS, there's the Windows button right there in the lower left-hand corner. You wanna access another device, there's the connection button. You wanna access the whiteboard, we won't call it whiteboard, we're going to call it discussion because that's what we want people to, to view it as. It's amazing how it's such a simple sounding thing, but it's amazing from a psychology standpoint, just how effective that can be in getting people to think about using their X series to the fullest, just by having the theme be ever present and, and be consistent the way that it is. And, and of course the, the gadget buttons are of other internal applications and the file viewer that brings up the file commander. The other thing too that I wanna to point out is there's a settings button right here in the top corner. So that's, that's a, a new location for that. You also have access to, um, to, when you have a thumb drive installed, there's a thumb drive button, which just takes you really right to the file commander. Uh, Cause again, the file commander um, um, handles all that. Um, and then the other thing too, that I wanna point out, probably the most important change of all uh, on the home screen compared to the previous X series products, is this add button down here. And what this allows you to do is this allows you to add uh, one button shortcuts to not just individual gadgets or applications on the display itself, but also individual ports, devices, and even Windows programs on the OPS. And again, I, I highlighted this last time. I'm gonna highlight it again, because it really is a great feature. When you are setting up shortcuts, there are individual windows that allow you to do that. So when you hit that add button, it shows you this window. And there are three buttons at the top. The middle one there, and you see the picture on the left-hand side, is for devices. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second, because uh, there's something very specific about that. The one on the right is for internal applications and gadgets, such as the Aquamail email program. But the, the devices, area. Now you'll notice right here that as an example, we have the X10D. For those of you who have heard about the X10D, that is our Android mini computer. It basically uh, transforms your TrueTouch uh, your, or your X series into a giant Android tablet, and it's wonderful. And you'll notice that that's actually got its own little icon, its own little logo, as well as its name that shows up on the device itself. And the reason for that is in the X series settings. So there's the settings window right there. One of the items is labeled new line extension. And when you bring up the new line extension, what that does is that allows you to select new line devices that can then be added with their own icons and their own naming scheme as a shortcut and you can also choose the port on which that device is going to be installed. So in the case of the X10D, if I've got that plugged into HDMI rear two, I can select that right there, get that plugged in. And so every time then I use the shortcut button on the home screen labeled X10D, it'll take me right there. 
So the new line extension is for new line devices, and that allows you to add them as shortcuts with their own icon and their own naming scheme. But with software, Windows software, and again, you have to do this part from the OPS, what I'm about to show you. This only applies to the OPS. It does not apply to a plugged-in uh, laptop or, or desktop because it's programmed to look for the OPS port and draw the information from there. And the program is called the New Line Assistant. It's a Windows utility, and when you run the New Line Assistant from the OPS, it brings up this window. And what that allows you to do is that allows you to drag and drop executables or shortcuts to executables. And they have to be an executable. It can't be a picture uh, or a PowerPoint file or something like that. It has to be an executable or a shortcut to an executable. And when you drag it into the drag and drop space there at the bottom of the window, it will then uh, have that application available for use as a shortcut. And so when you go back to the add shortcut from the home screen and choose the Windows logo button at the top, the programs that you, dra that you dragged into the New Line Assistant will be available right here. You can add as a shortcut and then one touch gets you right to that program. Uh, so again, this is a way that we allow our users to have quick, efficient, intuitive access to the things that they use most often. And that's really the name of the game. When you can, when you can uh, shorten the number of touches it takes from, to get you from point A to point B, when you wanna use those things that you're using all the time, that's a really wonderful thing. And we wanted to make that available um, on the X6, the X8, and the X9. And so that's one of the real key features uh, and key changes um, of the newer X series is the ability to use these shortcuts. And there, wouldn't you know it, this slide would be the indication that, in fact, my presentation has concluded. Uh, so, again, I wanted to point out some of the key changes, some of the key additions to the X6, X8, and X9, and point out those differences compared to the previous X-Series product um, that, we, that we still currently have. Uh, and I will do what I, what I always do. If I have, again, like we've, we heard from Wes, so anybody from New Line who would like to add uh, an additional take uh, to what I just said, um, you're welcome to do that now. So, Wes, you or anybody else, um, if you've got something additional you'd like to add to it, you are welcome to take yourself off mute and do so. Okay, and with that, I will open it up now to the floor. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns about the new X-Series products? Don't be shy. Okay, well, once again, I thank everyone for joining us this week on the New Line Interactive Weekly Wisdom Webinar. Once again, this recording will be uh, posted to our YouTube page, uh, so you're welcome to go and review this whenever you wish. And for anybody um, who missed it, you can go ahead and give them a heads up. Um, and, oh, I have somebody with a question. Go ahead, and if you, yeah, if, you're, if you don't have access to a microphone, no problem. You're welcome to go ahead and type your question, so go right ahead and do it. And I'll wait a second because I have somebody I think has to, has to do this on the IM, which is fine. And I'll give you a moment to do that real quick. My 30-second intro to New Line. Okay, so it's funny that you mentioned that because I've actually done a webinar on this too. <laughs> um, but actually, that was probably, I think that was the first webinar I did. I don't think that one got recorded. Uh, I'm going to have to fix that. I'm going to have to do that one again just to get a, just to get it recorded. Um, uh, sadly, you won't be able to because uh, that, was a, that was a webinar that I did that unfortunately did not get recorded. But here's, here's what I'll do. I'll give you my elevator pitch. And then, it, Wes, if you want to chime in and give yours as well, um, you're, you're welcome to do so. But I'll, I'll start it off by saying this. Um, the idea behind New Line, and when you think about it, we make big, beautiful displays that look great. Uh, we make big, beautiful displays that look great in a conference room or a classroom and have wonderful interactive features. All the other guys make big, beautiful displays that look great in a conference room or a classroom and have interactive features. In other words, what I'm saying is the products themselves um, pretty much pretty much the same. <laughs> they're, pre they're pretty much the same. 
So, yes, we may, in fact, have a difference with a feature here or there, but that's not really where the new line difference is. And, and yes, I can sit here and I will absolutely put our, the quality of our products up against anybody else's, but the reason I can do that is the difference with new line is everything we do surrounding and after the sale. For instance, if the product says new line, it is new line. We are one of the last bastions of self-manufactured product on the planet. And by the way, in the United States, we do not OEM to anybody else. We, oh, I'm sorry. So somebody got, somebody got kicked out of the call. So once again, one of the great differences with New Line is it's not just about the product itself. It's about what we do before, during, and after the sale. So we manufacture our own products. When it says New Line, it is New Line. We have equity stake in our own factory. We do not OEM products in the United States. We do not OEM products to anybody else. So if it says New Line, it is New Line, and nobody else gets it. The other thing that's great about that is that I will put our service and tech support up against anybody else in the business. We are one of the great companies when it comes to follow-up. We're one of the great companies when it comes to handling issues and making sure that the customer comes first. And I know that sounds like a lot of lip service because every company likes to say how different, how so different they are than everybody else. But we are one of the companies that, walk, that walks and talk. Okay, so what's in it for the client? Well, here's what's in it for the client. Here's the first thing that's in it for the client. So you go with brand XYZ. And you say, fantastic, I'm all in. I need 100 of these things when you can get them to me. How about two months from now? Yeah, with New Line, you put in a PO, we have our own factory, we have our own warehouse. Right here in Plano, Texas, we are stacked and packed. We get the PO today, depending on the time of day, we'll be able to ship today. Or at the very least, we can ship tomorrow. That's one of the great things about doing business with us. Another great thing about doing business with us is we really stand by our product. And over the life of the warranty, which does vary from product to product, but over the life of that warranty, we do have an advanced replacement that we feel very good about. We are not going to force a customer to have a technician come over, pull the thing apart, and try and do a repair on site. Nope. If there's any issue, we will send a new unit out. We will collect the old unit. And that's it. No fuss. And our tech support team is very, very good about troubleshooting over the phone and making those determinations when that needs to happen. Um, and so those are the sorts of things that we can talk about with a customer. Another thing that we can talk about, and this is related, is because it's our product, it's our factory, as opposed to a typical OEM business, when you have a, man, when you have a vendor that does, has a partnership with a factory somewhere. And that works fine when that partnership is going great. But I'll hold on a second. What happens when that partnership is no longer working? So if you have a situation when you have a deployment of units now, and then you have another deployment of units that's going to happen, what, six months down the road, a year down the road, a couple of years down the road, and then that vendor had to change factories and partnerships, there is a very real possibility that that product you're getting now is not the same stuff that was demoed to you the first time. But with New Line, you're going to get either the next generation of the same family, if not the overall same product. And that's good for you because you're always going to be assured of the same experience from New Line year after year after year. And that's really the New Line difference. You know, I'll add to that. Um, the other thing, Dante, that you should think about is that while, while the True Touch display, the True Touch series is very much like a lot of the other products that are out there, as Tim mentioned, the X series is somewhat unique in that it is an all-in-one interactive uh, unified collaboration system, meaning that it's not just a computer touchscreen display. It's also a video conferencing system with built-in microphones and cameras all in one. And that is something that is not as ubiquitous as the, the, just the idea of a general uh, interactive display. So what's in it for the client? Simplicity. Same thing Tim was there talking about. If you don't have to plug in cameras and plug in microphones and have cables all over the place, and you're, you know, let's say you buy a, uh, an X6 or an X8, which oftentimes is going to be mounted on a mobile stand. If they have these additional pieces of gear that have to go along with it, a lot of times that stuff, the, the display gets moved into the room, 
and oops, the uh, microphones aren't there, or oops, the camera isn't there with it. And then you have these 10, 11 meetings of, minutes of meeting hell at the beginning, and suddenly you, you know, everyone's sitting around waiting for somebody from IT to come in there and plug everything in. So right. this is exactly what you want to be pitching when you're talking about the X series, is that this is a hang and bang solution. And that's that's really what the what the beauty of is it for the corporate and um, you know higher ed and higher ed yeah government uh, they're using these things for telehealth it's a great great system for telehealth because if you put one of these things up and it's too difficult to use it becomes a really expensive doorstop it, it's not going to and and that's why we we really stress simplicity and ease of use and so I I think that's really the if there, if there is a thirty second pitch. Because it's hard to get in all the advantages of <laughs> 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah. But if, not, if there is one, this that would be it. I'll take that one step further, too. If we're going a little longer than 30 seconds, the thing I would also point out, and this is not to knock other vendors, but a, a lot of other vendors in the business um, try to be – software companies as much as they are hardware companies. And a lot of times what you'll find is a vendor will, will want to center the overall usage of their interactive displays around a specific piece of software that they really, really, really want you to use. And again, I'm not knocking that. That's just the way they choose to attack the business. But at New Line, we don't do that. At New Line, we'll never force a piece of software down a customer's throat. We are all about giving them the best experience for what they have and what they need. And that's true if we're talking our traditional True Touch products. It's true if we're talking about our X series, which is a great all in one solution that allows you not just to have the simple solution as Wes uh, very eloquently pointed out, but also you get to use what you need. So everything you need and nothing you don't. All right, very good. Um, it reminds well, me of probably, yeah. All that stuff together, Dante. <laughs> yeah, for real. No, for real. So, help you. And yeah, and that's the thing. You know, for 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 those of us, for our partners out there, when you when you want to have the wingman or the wing, the, I'll say the wing person. When you want to have the wing person, and you want to have someone who can help you deliver the message to a customer, um, not only are we available to do that, we love to do that. That's that's what we are here, guys like Wes. Um, who was is, who is a part of the sales team, um, that, is, that is the essence of what Wes does. Uh, so any time that you have a situation you want to make that happen, do not be shy about giving us a call. Uh, we are more than happy uh, to be there uh, and, and help nail it down for you anytime. Um, but thank you very much. That was wonderful. It's also a reminder for me that maybe I want to go ahead and revisit uh, the New Line story and do another webinar on that one that I can actually record. So, um, so I might I might get on that one of these weeks and and uh, have that. But this recording is done. Yeah, I'll know. I'll admit, Dante, I got you, brother. I got you. I will make that happen. <laughs> so, but once again, I want to thank everybody uh, for joining the New Line Interactive Weekly Wisdom webinar. Once again, great discussion. I'm glad that everybody was able to join us. This recording will get on our YouTube page. It will happen early next week. So if you want to see the replay, you can absolutely do that by, by going to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much, everybody, once again, and have a great weekend. And we'll see you next time. 